yourself. All right. Welcome to June 6th, 2023 sales meeting. Um, we are going to kick this off with Jerry. Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone's having a beautiful morning. We, it's now summer and I am loving it. I know Ken's loving it. So very, very good. Um, let's see. Do I have anything? Oh, end of May just happened. So if you guys have any um, transaction rooms you haven't turned in, please get those turned in. You, you missed it, but, you know, just get them in anyway for next month. Um, so that's my, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right. For listings for last week, we had Ashley, Terry and Andrew. So good job. You three. And for who got keys, we had Anne, Ken, Molly and Joan. So congratulations, everyone. For leases, we had Swan and Margarita. And for the lease uh, keys, we had Edward, Laura, Delisha, Destiny, Luis, Megan, Bianca and Karen. So congratulations everybody on, uh, on the job well done. Oh, it's me. Hi. Um, okay. So announcements this week. Uh, we have, again, just a reminder, the Latino Clients Council um, is now ready to go. Um, posts are now available in the library section of the design center. So if you want to go into the design center, that is where you will, um, find that. And we're working on the new, uh, council as well. So watch for a Google form you can fill out to express your interest in that. Sound good? Sweet. Um, and may that should say June birthdays, June. But anyway, um, we have Deborah Smith, Gabe, uh, already saw his on the second. Joe Cunningham is on the third. Oscar was on the fourth. Swans tomorrow. Cammie is on the 10th. Uh, Terry Richard is on the 11th. Catherine is on the 12th. Shayla is the 26th. Norma is the 14th, which I don't know why April is in there. Lisa probably got distracted is all I'm saying. Um, Cynthia is June 17th and Tandeep is the 19th. So wish them a happy birthday. Oh, we have more. Martha uh, Gwen is on the 19th. Brooke is on the 21st. Eli Z is the 23rd. Christine Labrie is the 29th in. Uh, Anna Sabrath Sabarathian is on June 30th. So, um, yep. It's okay, Lisa, Lisa, we know we, you know, you're going in 30,000 directions. Um, and this week's agent of the week is Molly Avia. So congratulations. Um, if you see Molly around, tell her uh, how fantastic she is. She truly is wonderful. Um, always here to help. So love it. And agent of the month is Delisha Clark. Delisha, congratulations. We see you, we see how hard you're working. And um, you just always uh, brighten up the uh, office whenever you're in here. So we love having you here. Just a reminder, next uh, Tuesday is our in-person sales meeting. So June 13th. So make sure to mark your calendars uh, and we will see you in person. Opportunity calling is going to be at 1130 today. So if you would like to call some for sale by owners, uh, go ahead and come on in and we will get you set up with some numbers to call. And also Friday, we have um, our success calling, which is expired on Friday. So a um, little bit different with Friday is that you actually get to choose your zip code that you are calling in. So um, make sure to um, come on in if you are needing some uh, kick in the rear to get your business going. Over to Ken. Ah, unmute, Ken. Unmute. You were doing something else. Which screen are we on? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to send somebody the link. I got all confused. I didn't know which screen I was on. And it's, and it's morning time. So there's that. Um, so we have a 
a which makes me very disappointed google review but we do have one so that's a good thing and good job on getting your google review in um we have so many agents here and i talk about these google reviews and they are they work every single week i'm seeing a lot of um google reviews come in and out and so i'd like to consent continue to keep consistently seeing all of these google reviews you guys are doing a good job at it but keep up with it because um now's a good time to get those google reviews and um people are looking to sell or buy houses this is the time where people start looking everybody looks when you're looking at a restaurant what do you do you google it you look at the reviews you look at all of that stuff so make sure you get those google reviews and if you want to know how to get them just let me know we have the cards on our desks here in the office and we'll be more than happy to help you with that so congratulations Anne, on that and uh, now we're moving on to our next little segment which is That's Andrew. Me. See, and i was shooting off an email too so um all right three month open house challenge ends june 30th so the end of this month make sure you are recording your open houses y'all are doing a phenomenal job let me just say um super super proud of y'all uh all of the open houses all of the signs that i see every weekend driving around to the different areas you are doing a phenomenal job uh getting yourselves out there so great job y'all great job all right so this uh, month, we are going to get back to the basics of selling real estate. So what I would like you to do is connect with your sphere regularly, make it a point to reach out to 25 people to check, check in and see what's new um, every single week. So 25 people per week, uh, it could be on Facebook, it could be, you know, you see, you, you know, um, don't be one of those creepers that just like never comments but you're watching people on their social profiles make sure that you're actually commenting and engaging with folks on your social profiles because you really that really does help you to build a relationship online but then um you know if you have their phone number reach out to them and ask them to go to coffee with you or go on a walk with you i mean morning walks are phenomenal this time of year afternoon walks are phenomenal so just kind of reach out to folks and see if you can't get together this week spend some time handwriting thank you notes and cards that you can send out to people that you've connected with so this is another one of those that we harp on doing handwritten notes right how many of y'all know that if you write a handwritten note and you put it in an envelope that we will stamp it for you you will then send it out but we'll stamp it for you how many of you know that raise your hands all right we got a couple of folks that know it well now you do so um hopefully you were listening to that do those handwritten notes if you need some addresses and you're like well i just don't know who to do handwritten notes to uh call me or text me i will get you a list of people in your area that you can do handwritten notes to make it a point to regularly interact with three to five times per week with your network on social media and ask for those referrals ask for those referrals you need to be asking um, if you are too scared to ask then you um, it's gonna be harder to get business so make sure that you're out there asking for those referrals how do you ask for a referral well um there's different ways usually if you say hey can you refer me to somebody um people will kind of mentally block and they can't think of who they the the initial response is going to be like well i don't i don't know anybody that's looking to buy or sell but if you ask a little bit deeper uh and ask if you hear of anybody at church or if you hear anybody at work or if you hear anybody at the gym if you hear anybody that is starting to talk about real estate please bring up my name i would love to um, connect with those folks to help them find what they are looking for in real estate and then host open houses every single week which y'all have been doing a phenomenal job at great job all right today's tip tuesday is our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to the amount of consideration we show towards others um so really it's it's the uh treat others the way that you want to be treated right that's that's 
really what it's all about. If you're out there uh, talking to people and showing that you care, guess what? That kind of comes back to you. People will start to want to talk to you and want to care about you as well. There's a reciprocal um, relationship there. So get out there, talk to people, just be who you are. Every single one of you um, is a caring individual. I know personally because I've met y'all. I know who you are as, as a human being. So um, yes, that's my tip Tuesday today. And this week's challenge on building, focus on building relationships. So building your book of business in real estate less is, is less about an immediate sale and more about building your network with people who know, like, and trust you. When having a conversation with people, focus on more than just real estate talking points. So you're not just gonna go out there and be like, hey, housing market, blah, 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 blah. There's, you're a deeper human being than that, right? Every one of you has their own passions um, outside of real estate that you'll be able to connect in with. Uh, Glenn, I know you're phenomenal at doing that and connecting with people. Um, and Gabe, same for you, Laura. Uh, Y'all are really great at connecting with people and uh, showing that you have a passion for life. And, and um, that's really how you can connect in with folks. So make sure to go out there and just do what you're doing, but talk to more people. Um, when you do talk shop, focus on chatting about what's great about the neighborhoods you work in, why the area could be a great fit for them, the amenities, and more. Um, building rapport, you're more likely to create lifelong clients and referral partners this way than just the one, one stop, like, all right, you're done, no longer going to talk to you. Was that relationship building? Social media ideas this week. We have shared some interior inspiration. Help potential clients visualize what's possible in their new home by sharing dream home level shots. It's fun for people to daydream during the home buying process. Um, and then what are three things you wish every potential home buyer started the process already knowing? Um, advice that would help them make the process easier, aka get them with PL. Uh, get them talking to the lender so that that way they are ready to pull the trigger when um, it's time. So, Rich, over to you. Good morning, sports fans. All right, all right. Success, success, success. Uh, got a good success story here brought to us by... Dana Suber. Hey, how about that? I got the name right. Uh, she was working phone duty. And lo and behold, somebody called and said, I need to sell my house. I need to talk to a realtor. And having the greatest of luck, she says, well, I am a realtor. So she's got a listing appointment today at 1030. Good luck on that. All right. Good job. Uh, so, yeah, phone duty works, right? Got to do it. Got to do it because you never know. It comes in. That was my first listing appointment I ever had was I got from the phone duty. So good job. All right. Who else has a good success story or even a bad success story? Who's got a success story, period? Betty Riley. I'm calling people out. All I right, have a success Eddie, story. I was in Colorado over the weekend and I ended up chatting with a bunch of friends at the gym that I used to know. And I got three contacts for people looking to uh, potentially like invest and do like the Burr method in Texas, like um, to put into my, you know, like I'm so excited to, to put into my sphere. I like you guys, I'm so proud of myself for talking to people. And yeah, you know, like people are like, Oh, do you have a card? Like a guy, I met a guy on the shuttle. He was like, can I get your card? I was like, I have one with me. There you <laughs> yep. go. Yeah. And even better than that, Carrie, uh, when you hand the card, get their phone number. I got phone numbers. I got all their phone numbers, That's contacts. Um, yeah. Super excited. Awesome, awesome. Throw them in that moxie engage and, and uh, get them on a campaign. Good job. That's right. why I came into the office today, so that I could make myself do all this instead of getting distracted with all my chores at home. Perfect, perfect. And that's the big deal, too, is, 
hey, everybody's got, everybody's got distractions, right? Prioritize, get your distractions and put them on hold and get to work in your business. That's what's gonna allow you more time to deal with those distractions. Good job, Carrie. Eddie, you had one too, right? Yeah, I got my first lease approval signed either last night or this morning. But then I got one that I just got a text message saying that they can't do the lease because they don't have all the funds to put up right now. But they don't move in until July 1st. So does everything have to be paid today for July 1st move in? I'll have to find out. But so I got one success, one that didn't go through. Then I have another one that should be signed on Thursday. That one's been in the works for the last three weeks. Good job, we Betty. We see you, Betty. Betty did Tony Ewing's um, open house every single day. Uh, well, I didn't do it last week, but starting Thursday when I get back from California, I'm going to start doing it every day again until we sell it. So, All right. find a buyer. Good job. Also, I was out showing property this weekend and at one of my lease or one of one of my lease clients and I was showing property and I took a picture because there's Betty Riley's card sitting on one, in one of the houses that she'd shown too. And I was like, hmm, I know this person. So I took a picture and I said, look where I'm at. Look what I just found and sent it to Betty. And she's like, what house is that? <laughs> so, it's kind of funny. It's nice to see people out there and leaving their business cards that we work with. I mean, you're out working people. That's great. That's great. And just one note about the, uh, uh, just one note about the, the phone room. If somebody calls and they ask for an agent, be sure to say, well, sure. Uh, I could connect you with them. Uh, what would this be regarding? And if they tell you, well, it's because I saw their name on a sign, then that tells you they're not, that's not their agent. They just interested in the house so you can snatch them up. So don't just turn into a, uh, a forwarding answer machine, right? Uh, you want to go ahead and pick up those, pick up those clients that aren't represented by the person they're talking, to, they're asking for. They right? can forward them to me too, if they want to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see, Kevin, you got something. Yeah, I just wanted to encourage people that, uh, I feel like the open houses are very productive right now. Um, I did one open house at like a 700,000 plus property um, outside of Georgetown. And I, out of the six families that came through, I have one, two active buyers, one buyer appointment, one listing appointment, and then two database people that like I specifically said, hey, you know, I have these tools that I can give you to stay with the market and so on and so forth. And they gave me a verbal, yes, I want that. And then they signed their name down. Um, I just want to encourage people, if you can find the time on the weekends to, to be overly prepared for these open houses and show that you're, you're the, uh, the go-to in that area or whatever, um, it's pretty much gold right now. Right, right. When you're doing these op open houses, uh, and I'm finding that there are more and more people that are saying, hey, I had a good open house. There's less people saying nobody showed. So so it's picking up, folks. It's picking up. Do those open houses and offer them something. Don't just let them get away. Offer them something like Kevin says, hey, man, I've got this. I can put you on a portal. I've got this or whatever. Then they'll be interested, right? So offering something is a good way to, to get somebody on the hook. Catherine. Yeah, I have two things. So first of all, my buyers and signer, we finally under contract with the house. Yay! Hey. <laughs> Took us three times getting bid out with cash offers in multiple offer situations. I thought we were done with it, but we weren't. But finally, we found the house and we got uh, the bid. And um, today is the inspection, actually. So um, cross fingers at every single stroke. So, and the other thing is uh, towards Kevin with open houses, sometimes you have nobody showing up and you think, oh, shoot, it's disappointing. But I always do something like, you know, do an open house tour with, with videos or um, snapshots and it helps your 
your online presence a little bit. And sometimes it's just the last five minutes of an open house, people are strolling in and they're telling you, yeah, we want to sell our house in New Brownsfeld and we have another one in, um, in uh, milestone in the milestone community and we want to get closer to um my son and now i'm working with that angle so it can be all both ways so um just keep up with the open house it's worth it absolutely yes and if your open house is from 2 to 4 p.m you stay there until 4 p.m because i can tell i can't tell you how many agents including myself that will get somebody at five minutes to four. And uh, those are the ones that, that I like because they're usually, hey, they want to get in there before, you know, before it, it's, they don't want to miss out on that open house. So stay until four, don't leave early because, well, it was slow. So I just ducked out, at, you know, 15 minutes early. No, stay there until 4 p.m. if that's the end of it. Okay, who else has something? Hey, I want to say something also. You you guys are doing the great job doing these open houses, but if you're doing them, make sure you are asking for the business because if you're not asking for the business, you're not going to get the business. So make sure when you're in there, don't be scared to ask for business because um, people could be lying to you about whether they have a real estate agent they, and they might not be happy with their real estate agent. So make sure you guys are still asking for the business. Make sure you're getting the contact information and all of that stuff to at least set them up on Moxie so that that way you can start sending them stuff too. So uh, there, that's all yeah. I got. Yeah. So, so let me see if I could make an analogy here. So a uh, little drum roll. Don't be a doorman. Be more of a concierge. Ooh, how is that? Right? Interact, guys. Interact. All right, guys. Back to you, Andrea. All right. Actually, it's over to Lisa because she's got relocation updates. Lisa. Huh? I do have relocation updates. <laughs> I was in a world of my own right then. <laughs> Um, okay, so the question of the week is, what are referral fees and why do we have them? Um, so referral, active referring, um, it's an, hi, um, a person recommending someone or something. Next page. Oh. Um, so different referral fees that we that we do have is um, so company leads that comes from JB Goodwin um, has a 25% um, leading real estate um, broker leads um, have 30% split and corporate leads which are businesses and things sent to us from businesses um, has a split of 35 to 41 depending they can they can range. Um, and the reason for these splits is because I know some people get mad and upset, but there is reasons, um, is that the relocation department has many um, expenditures. So, you know, they have to lead in real estate, has to uh, maintain websites, they have to have memberships in relocation networks. Um, they also have to market um, to the referral sources, to the businesses to get that business. Um, so for an example, a lot of people ask how it is. So um, this is on a $400,000 sale. Um, we earn 3% commission normally. 30% um, of that is then taken and given to the relocation. Um, so 30% of that is 3,600, which leaves the commission at 8,400. This is then split 50-50 with JB Goodwin. So giving you a total of 4,200 agent commission. Now, I know a lot of people do get upset at these um, things, but business is business. You are leading, um, you are generating your sphere, you are generating um you know money you're generating money <laughs> and but you are those clients can turn into your own referral clients 
Um, and if that client refers you to somebody, then that's your client. Uh, they're fully yours. Um, so going on to why I want to work um, with a referral um, is it, a referral through JB Goodwin is such a trusted thing. Um, people, when they're referred by another agent or their business or their company, then they are, they, you already have credibility before they even talk to you. They already think that you're with a top-notch company, that you, you know, you're, you're the best in the business. Um, so you, before you've even spoken to them, you have that credibility. Um, and why do I want to work with a referral? You make a sale, your track numbers go up, your sale numbers go up. Again, your credibility, it's constantly building your credibility and your sphere um, and you wouldn't have that business um, from your own marketing. So it's additional business. Um, and then why do I want to work with a referral content chance to meet other clients, future business? As I've said, I can go on about it all day. I love Relo and I love the opportunities that it has given to me. Um, and each referral can give you an additional two and a half percent, like two and a half times more clients, like I said, through referrals from that referral. And that's it. If anybody has any Relo questions, let me know. Rich, I think, had a comment. Yeah, just one thing I want to say about that. I've heard agents say that they don't want to do Relo because it's a 50-50 split. But they must be doing pretty good to turn away four grand, right? Uh, if if you look at uh, most of the high uh, of the of the high producers in our brokerage, we all do reloads because let me tell you something that's that's more money than I had in the bank the day before. So uh, uh, don't be snooty about it. Get that because it's not only the money that you get; it's the referrals. That's it. I have something to say on that too. Um, because we we do hear a lot of complaining about the 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 splits and all of that kind of stuff, and there is a lot of people that are out there that want these referrals. So if you don't want to do it, we'll we'll find somebody that will do it for you. Because there is a lot of people that really like to get on that on that relocation or want to do the relocation, um, and it's phenomenal. Like you said, Rich, you you know you get those referrals from people, and you never know who they know. There's a lot of uh, um, relocation. Um, I just, I just think it's phenomenal. So, good job, Lisa. I think it's two. I just closed on one yesterday, so She's I'm very happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Judy's on the call as well. Um, Judy, how do people, if they want to work with uh, Relo, how do they, how do they do that? There are three things that we look for uh, to um, meet the criteria is um, tenure. So, you know, have been with us um, for a certain amount of time. Uh, transactions. So super, super important that um, you're you're doing some business, um, especially when that gets into our broker to broker and corporate referrals. Um, corporate referrals have their own criteria of three years minimum and 25 transactions a year. Uh, but we have a lot of different um, steps to take. So we have our um, website leads, our Shark Tank, that is actually we don't have any criteria just other than that you um, be breathing and have completed square one. So that's that's it. And then um, stepping up from that is Op City. Stepping up from that is our broker to broker. And then you would um, grow into the corporate business. Uh, and the other there's three P's. So there's um, tenure, there is transactions, and there's training. So we do have um, some training that we're getting on the schedule right now that uh, will teach you how to work with our relocation leads. Awesome. Thank you, Judy. All right. So there's massive value in working relocation. Um, and a lot of folks have really stepped up their game working with them. So um, that said, we're going to move on to JB Giving. 
Um, we have an opportunity June 22nd from 2 to 3.30. So that's an hour and a half-ish. Um, and we'll be supporting Hope Austin um, efforts on behalf of children facing food insecurity by assembling care bags. So Hope Austin is located on Anderson Mill, close to 183. It is in North Austin. So if y'all have time on June 22nd and you would uh, like to help out with packing up these bags for these kiddos, then um, go ahead and you should rec have received a Google form for Hope Boston. If you search your email for that, um, there we need about 15 to 20 volunteers. So uh, sign up if you would. And I think I saw Pam on here. Am I crazy? No, you're not crazy. <laughs> hey, Pam. Um, over to you. Yes. Um, so as you see, we've got up there the summer bucket list. That's a fun piece that we created for you guys to put out on your social media, or you can put a little something together and just go and hand it out to some of your neighbors. Um, but it's just an easy piece to have along because there's a lot of really fun things on there that I've actually done a couple of. So um, yeah, um, we've also got some classes coming up. Uh, we've got June 15th. That's uh, going to be at 10 o'clock. It's the market uh, story, which is actually a really great class. It's a one hour CE course. They're going to go over the three um, key factors that impact house pricing, how to answer the housing bubble you're probably getting, and then define like housing affordability. So um, those are things I know you guys are coming across a lot in y'all's marketplace. And so it's a really, really good class if y'all can make that and all the information to y'all. And then we've got another one. Um, listen, uh, listen, talk, and learn. And so it's like just how to improve your communication skills with your clients, um, how to um, just have a better have a better way of, of getting information from your clients as well. Um, that's also a really good class. That's going to be June 22nd. And we also have Title Talk that's coming up with Christy, which is just our standing appointment with Christy every, is it the third Thursday um, that we'll have at y'all's office. But y'all can come in with any questions that you have, anything to do about title or any, just real estate in general. We're just kind of there to kind of throw that around and um, we'd love to have you join us. So anyway, that's all I got for today. Thanks. All right, thank you, Pam. And over to David with Premier Nationwide Lending. Hello there, how you guys doing? Um, I'm taking Kevin's place today. He's still around, but he had a, another appointment today. Um, I'll say, I, you know, I appreciate what you guys are talking about. You know, we talk about the same things, getting back to basics, being active in what you're doing. That's really how you're successful in these kind of businesses. So I really appreciate what you guys are talking about today. Um, also, you talk about uh, open houses. Make sure you let Kevin work, help you with the open houses. You know, we're doing quite a bit of geofencing. I know he's mentioned it before, but this weekend we had several houses where we had 4,000 uh, views on a geofenced open house and over 50 single property visits to a website. So if you want to do your open houses, you need to get in touch with Kevin because those things do matter. We get loans from those kind of things. We get applications, our realtors that use that, get people calling them from that. So it's a great way to use us to help you with geofencing. There's no cost for you. And we will geofence your open houses for you so you can do that. Or if you're going to walk neighborhoods, it's a great idea to geofence a neighborhood before you walk a neighborhood or right after you walk a neighborhood because they get to see your flyers you pass out, then they get to see you when they drive in on their phones and things like that. So a lot of things that we can do to help you or Kevin can do to help you or Matthew or anybody on there can help you. But you know, let us help you do the things that you wanna do, even getting back to basics, whether it's the cards or whatever, we teach the same things. Have Kevin help you, brainstorm together with Kevin. We talk about that stuff all the time. He's there to help you grow your business. Um, real quick on business wise, it's still the perfect time to buy a house. Um, yesterday, I was at a baseball game on, I guess not yesterday, but on Sunday, I was at a baseball game. And a guy behind me said, I used to be a realtor. And I'm a part-time realtor now because it's a terrible time for people to buy houses because of interest rate. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. There is no other time that I know of in this business. I've been in business 40 years that someone can buy a house today and have the instant equity and values they have and also using somebody else's money to pay to help them buy the house there's never been another time that this in our industry that it's been this prevalent so you need to go out and talk to people about now is the time to buy a house if you need somebody to help you talk to them contact us 
excuse me, we'll contact them also. But today is the time to buy a house. This is the perfect time to set yourself up for future wealth if you want to buy a house. So contact us, let us know. But today's a great time to buy a house. Make sure everybody knows that. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, Anna, did you have a question? Yes, Andrea. So, uh, David, uh, currently, I think uh, for uh, the current uh, uh, interest rate is 7.17% for primary home buyers, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's, a, it's about 7%, 7.1%. It, it all depends on your customer, but I mean, in a general number, yeah, let's say that, yes. Yes, and for uh, prim uh, for primary home uh, lenders, it's fine, but how about investment homes? What is the tax rate, actually? Oh, interest rate, sorry. For uh, say investment properties? Mm-hmm. Uh, investment property is typically going to be about 50 to 75 basis points higher mm -hmm. than um, the traditional rates that you're getting right now. That's going to be the basic ballpark you can think about, unless they need to do a brokered product or something like that. Um, but yeah, that will be more than nine. But yeah, as a typical, it's going to be 50 more to 10, 75 basis points higher. Okay. So you think uh, there would be chances of uh, interest rate going down in the future for this year? Uh, this year, I mean, you know, it all depends on what happens. You know, a lot of short term things happen, like the debt ceiling and things like that. But yeah, I would predict that rates will go down somewhat this year. Um, will they go down a lot? Probably not. Not to make a difference to where if I'm waiting to buy a house, it could be waiting several months. So why wait? I can take care, of, I can take advantage of the interest rate whenever it changes later on. But I can't find the values I can get today and the equity I can get today if I wait. Because once rate starts going down, that equity goes away. And I'd, for me, I'd much rather have a higher interest rate and seventy-five thousand dollars in equity compared to my neighbors than I would a lower interest rate and be seventy-five thousand dollars to the negative in equity. It just makes sense to buy today because you are for building wealth. Today is the time. Yes, but uh, one of the calculations. Thank you, David. But uh, I think last few questions. So um, right now, because of the I mean, previously it was about four to four point five percent interest rate. So when we do the calculations for EMI, you know, for a four sixty thousand dollar home, uh, because just because of the interest rate, when it was four percent, it comes about twenty five hundred, and when it's seven point one seven percent, it comes about uh, thirty two hundred. It's a matter of seven hundred dollars per month. Okay. So I mean, how would the investors or buyers be more willing to pay more uh, EMI every principal interest uh, every month on this higher interest rate? That's my question. How to bring buyers? How to motivate them? I don't understand. Okay, so an investor obviously it all depends on the, what they can rent a house for, right? I mean, it depends on that. So I really can't speak to what an investor is going to do for sure, just because it all depends on what they're doing as far as with the property, how they're doing it, short term rental, whatever it is, right? But when it comes to just a regular person buying a house, think about this. If if a if a customer contributes fourteen thousand dollars to me in concessions, I keep fourteen thousand dollars in my bank, right? Okay. That fourteen thousand dollars can be used to offset the higher payment, and it's going to be offset it for almost almost two years. Within those two years, rates are going to drop, so you're still in a much better situation by doing that and using concessions from a seller, you can still make your payment for two years, take advantage of the lower interest when it's time, and also today take advantage of having more equity than your neighbors have today. Mm -hmm. That's why when you look at it, if you do it right, today is the right time for people to really leverage the situation of a little bit higher interest rates to their advantage for the long-term gain. That makes sense. Okay. Yes, David. So um, I completely understand the positive uh, note of you saying that uh, in two years the interest rate would come down, uh, and we can do uh, refinance. So definitely, I would consider, and uh, hopefully the tax, uh, the interest rate goes down this year as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much, uh, Anna and David. And that was really insightful, David. Um, to kind of get people thinking about how to structure their deals to where it does make financial sense uh, to get into a property now. Um, something else to note uh, that Kevin and David have been doing the B3. Um, they did the B3 lunch uh, last Friday. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. 
And um, so they're going to be doing that about once a month. But directly after that uh, lunch, there is a lender roundtable. And there was a phenomenal turnout for that um, with some great questions, really great insight on how to structure deals and uh, what to know about rates right now. So if you um, are wanting a little bit a deeper understanding on how to do all of that, make sure to come to these things. We do them for you. So, um, and Kevin and David are such a great wealth of knowledge for us. So thank you, thank you. And real quick, Andrea, just so you guys understand, when I say this, I'm not saying it to just to say it. I bought my house and closed on my house March 20th for this exact same reason. That's why I waited another year and a half to buy a house later and buy it now than a year and a half ago because of this exact situation. So when I say this, I believe this. I don't just say it, I believe it. Awesome. Thank you. All right, we're gonna go on over to Ken with Market Talk. What you got going? I might have a lot going on. Um look at that within the last seven days 1214 new active listings price decreases 1657 price increases same scenario as every week uh new builds are usually doing the price increases um back on the mark but let me just explain these price increases for the new builds the new builds are usually because they've started and they put it in the, they put it on the mls and then by the time it's done being built that's when the price increases go into effect so that's where we're getting a lot of price or i'm sorry yeah a lot of price increases of the 319 that's what i've been looking at uh back on the market there's 216 active under contract 507 uh, pending 566, closed 1,079 within the last seven days, withdrawn 206, expired. That one is amazing. 185 expired listings within the last seven days. Who's getting them? You guys come in and do these, get these expireds. Andre hands them out to you guys all the time. So, Come in here and start making those calls and get those listings. On hold, there's 114. So this week I did Round Rock ISD. There's currently active 417 active listings in Round Rock ISD, ranging from $220,000 in Round Rock ISD. Now, I did look at the house for $220,000. It is uh, It needs a lot of work, but it is close to downtown Round Rock. So if you know of an investor that's looking for something that that needs some work on it for $220,000 near Round Rock, uh, near downtown Round Rock, that's a heck of a deal to 3.3 million. So of course I had to look this up and this is on eight acres in Round Rock and it's like 6,500 square foot house. Um, uh, active under contract or pending, there's 276. Sold within the last 30 days. Uh, in 2023, there was 188. Uh, there was 292 in 2022 and 281 in 2020. Sold year to date, 910 currently. As opposed to 2022, there was 1179 and 2020, 1094. We're really not that far behind for selling. I mean, Everybody's saying, oh, the market's slowing down. It's slowing down and doing all these things. No, like David said, I'm going to um, go on his uh, shirt tail or whatever that's called and, and say uh, the market's really not slowing down. So you guys get those listings out there, get those buyers out there. There's plenty of inventory and there's plenty of people that are looking to still sell and buy. 63.67 uh, days of inventory. Um Average house price, 552,414 currently, as opposed to last year, 632,354. And look at that in 2020, 376,659. Um, and then the average days on the market currently is 65. In 2022, it was 15. In 2020, it was 27. So again, you guys, get out there go get those listings round rock isds 
everybody knows that's a great place to be. We're in Round Rock ISD here in this office. So let's uh, get those listings, get those buyers and do some work and look at those expireds, you guys. Yep, just a reminder y'all that um, 65 days on market is a healthy market. That is not a, that that is a much, more fun market to play in than the 15 days was last year. That was a very hard uh, market to be in as a buyer's agent because it was just hard to find deals. I mean, how many of us saw that we had clients that couldn't come up with hundreds of thousand dollars to pay over ask and you just felt like they were stuck. So we're in a much better position nowadays. Prices are uh, lower than last year, which is phenomenal for those buyers. Um, sellers are still getting a heck of a deal as long as they live there past 2020. Like if they if they purchased in 2020 or before, you're still getting a ton of money out of your house. So um, keep that in mind, y'all. And now over to I don't is Kareen on today? Did I see Kareen on there? Yes. All right, Kareen. Updates. No, she is not. Uh, Rich, you were shaking your head yes. And I, <laughs> yeah, I don't see her on there. I don't he was know. Looking at some other name, Andrea. He, he was on there earlier. Oh, uh, okay. So um, I will go ahead and read the updates. Uh, so we have um, gaining a competitive edge with JVG tools tomorrow from 11 to 12. This is Google Meet. Uh, you're welcome to come in here if you need Wi Fi and uh, watch the uh, class, but it is virtual, so you can also do it from home. We've got upcoming trainings June 14th next week, which is farming that produces a harvest. June 20th, we have home staging stage two show. June 21st, creative ways to use a CMA to generate business. And June 28th, using QR codes as a lead vacuum. Next Monday uh, is our uh, lovely Tammy Gardner, who's going to be talking about lessons in connections. So if you have not checked out the Monday morning breakthrough, I highly suggest it. There's, um, I just uh, hosted the, or I didn't host, Grant hosted me as a guest this past Monday. And it was a lot of fun, y'all. We had some really great conversation. So um, I am excited to hear Tammy's story and uh, see what insights I can learn from her. It's that time during the sales meeting, who needs what just listed, buyer needs, lease needs, raise your hand and we I will call on you. Nobody has anything going on. Really? I think everybody's still sleeping. Taylor, what you got? <clears throat> hey, sorry. I was doing something real quick. Um, I do have a new lease lead coming up in San Marcos. Um, it will be, I think, listed for $19.50. And then, Ken, I'm going to stop by today to try to get it organized. Um, but if anybody's looking for um, a house in San Marcos, let me know. Um, you know, built in 2020 and new development. Hey, thank you, Taylor. Uh, Nick, what you got? Hi, guys. I am currently looking for an investment property. Um, looking for multifamily, if possible. If anybody has anything, please reach out. I'm looking to stay under around uh, 350 price point. That's about it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nick. Latasha, what you got? Hey, you guys. I have a property that's listed in Leander. It's a four-bedroom, uh, two-bathroom. Uh, the the uh, owner of the home is ready to move to Arizona immediately. So they're extremely flexible on the price. Nick, if you're looking in Leander for <laughs> an investment property, I've been actually calling around to different investors and trying to get this house sold and off the market for these people. So please give me a call if you're interested. Thank you. Uh, what's the price point? Well, she has it listed at 400, but I've explained multiple times she has it listed, you know, in an undesirable price point for the area at this time. So she's flexible between 350 and 400. 
So I where is it located? It's in Leander, so it's a five. Leander, one, okay. Yeah, it's five one two uh, Riverway Drive, five one two Riverway Drive, Leander, Texas. Four bedrooms, three bathrooms. Very, very, very nice um, backyard. But I will warn you, the air conditioner is out. Everything else is good. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Um, all right, anybody else going once? So, uh, okay. if you all know a home uh, for an investor, um, which is at a price point of 400 to 450,000 and uh, within um, 15 minutes from domain, uh, and uh, it, it has to be a single family residential or a detached condo, is fine. Um, so it would be great if you have a property uh, within uh, 15 to 20 minutes of you know, travel time uh, to domain. Can you see what the price point was you were looking at on that? 400 to 450, Carrie. 400 to 450,000. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Not to derail us, but Nick, are you laying underneath the tractor right now? Maybe. <laughs> and it's a dump truck. It's a dump truck. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes, I am. Uh, okay. Uh, Lisa, what you got? Hello. Uh, I have a lease listing at 717 Birchfoot Drive in Leander. Um, it is a three bedroom, um, two bathroom, uh, fully repainted, full flooring throughout, um, all like updated um and it is going for 2150 and it is 1400 square feet one story awesome thank you lisa uh anybody else going once latasha has something no yes she, oh you still do uh -huh. okay what you got Oh, maybe I should put my hand down. Sorry, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Maria, Castro, what you got? I have a lease listing in Forest Creek. Um, it's a four bedroom, two bath. Uh, the fourth bedroom could be used as an office, as a wood floor. It's very pretty. And um, it's 2,217 square feet. And uh, it's in a golf course community and a nice neighborhood uh so if anyone's interested um let me know all right thank you maria uh catherine yeah it's, uh we're preparing uh joanne's home for listing it wanted to go this week but probably will be more like next week um it's on uh 2408 farmer court it's 2775 square feet it's uh five um bedrooms and three baths uh all on one level super cute home so we want to list it around the 700 so if you have somebody just let us know awesome all right thank you catherine and you said that was 475 the the address and uh, the price point 700 700 uh, no, 700. 700 okay all right cool yeah sorry my <laughs> dyslexic brain um all right uh thank you catherine anybody else have a fantastic week y'all we will see you next week in person in person next week have a great week, week.